Well, what's going on? We finally have our bookshelf and books. So I'm finally gonna be able to actually unpack, well, rehaul all of our books and hopefully this video will come out good. So here's our bookshelf. I just put it together and then all of our books. There's a appearance from our dog. And we finally got these. It took like four months to get all of our books in, but now I get to distribute them all and see where they all go. I'm not sure. They're all not gonna fit on this bookshelf, but we have some other stuff going on. All right, so here are the boxes of books open. A little sneak peek at the tops. See what they're like in the middle. So you have some games there for some reason. Cookbook stuff. All right, let's get to unpacking. All right, so uh, organizing bookshelves isn't always the easiest. We make a progress so far and all of them do not fit as of right now. Um, have a couple of boxes that we still need to kind of go through and another shelf that I'll kind of pan through as I go figure things out. But so far we have, this is kind of like a discard box of books, 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 yeah, um, that we're going to go through double check, see if we even want to keep. This is like the random books that are kind of like one-offs or just like not really sure which place they fit in or, or not necessarily where to go. This is the overcast runoffs that do not fit on the shelf. Um, still going to do some overall organizing with this and another one of our shelves. All right, so pretty much finished organization. Still have two boxes, one for discards on hauls, the other for over, like just don't even know where it fits, but I'm gonna run through a little bit of what I did. This is our little reading nook area. Got TV there next to the family room. So going through, we have some of our box sets on top just because it's easier for them to not knock over. Uh, this is the Michael J. Sullivan shelf, as you can see, all Michael J. Sullivan except one. And then this is the like quick grab one off standalone shelf because I mean, it's on the end. If you just really want a book to read real quick, uh, not sure what to read, then this is what you know, you're just gonna go right here and pick something up. Going down, this is another series. That series on the left is probably I'm going to read this year. Probably maybe in both of these, but I know that this one is definitely high on my priority list. Over here, we got another, some more series all grouped together and uh, two randoms on top. More series, another six book series that I wanna read. And uh, yeah, so just more series. We have not much better lighting, uh, let's see. Red Rising, other series, you got three trilogies, or a couple trilogies up here, and then that Beauty and the Beast one there. This is all of our Book of the Month books, real quick. And then Overflow, trying to group series together. I know people don't, some people don't like stacking the floor, but guess what, we don't have any, any room. And then we still have other stacks over here of series, so not really the bastard books, but you know, we're running out of room. And then I really want to turn your attention on to our awesome coffee table because it is full of books again another one full of series right there and then coming around every single side has books there's that it's on wheels so here's our james patterson that we're just now getting into and then coming back around to the fourth side fourth crate is more it's like more middle grade so that's how this is. This was just four crates that our in-laws made for us. Stuck them together, put some wheels on it, and that's how that goes. So this is this little reading nook down here. 
I have my other bookshelf that I've mentioned before that you've seen in my background in my office that has all my books on there that uh, only I'll read. So I'll do that uh, another time later because there's an entire other box there and more organization to be done. Hey, what's going on? So now I'm in my office ready to organize some of my books. As you might have seen um, in past videos, this is my bookshelf, but we're getting into some other stuff, blank spaces that I have going on here, things that I need to get rid of. And uh, then I have my big box of books that I need to organize and get up on these shelves. So that's what I'm gonna do here now today after you saw my downstairs bookshelf and um, unboxing all those. Now these are the ones that are just gonna be up in my office. So now I'm going to try and but I take all this down and then put all these books up and see what happens with the organization. Got a couple of books still on the ground to figure out where they go. You figure out where all my technology and charging stations go, kind of use at the bottom. But coming up top, thinking of having the mass market paper as it's perfect to have right up there. Um, might start to separate into sci fi and fantasy depending on how that goes. Um, now I know I have probably have a Stephen King shelf. Now I know I have not the most user friendly or space friendly um, bookshelf because it's kind of only big enough for certain books. And when you go across, some of those books are a little bit too tall, but that's fine. I like to have a little bit of something unique. So this is just what I'm working with now and then we'll figure out where everything goes. Alrighty, so finished up. So I went with this. This is perfect for my mass market paperbacks. I got my Michael Crichton, uh, all my Michael Crichton. Basically, this is the Michael Crichton shelf, and then I have my uh, then I have my Thrawn trilogy here and the Isaac Isaac Asimov I Robot series right there. Um, this is technically sci-fi, which should be down here, but the mass market paperback just fits right there. This is my fantasy self shelf, and I know that this doesn't seem like a whole lot of fantasy, but this is just my adult fantasy that probably only I will read, my wife won't. So downstairs, as we saw before with my previous bookshelf, that's pretty much all fantasy, all fantasy series. And uh, that's like where my Mike, Michael J. Sullivan is and uh, Red Rising, even though that's sci-fi, but all that, pretty much just all fantasy downstairs and mysteries and thrillers, because that's what the both of us read in our Venn diagram. But these are the fantasy that she won't read. And this is my one, Steve, my one like hardback Stephen King book that won't fit down on the Stephen King shelf. And this is all sci-fi. <clears throat> Basically, as you can tell, I read sci-fi, but my wife pretty much doesn't. <clears throat> so I have this. She found this when we were moving, when we just moved in here. We She's had this book for like four or five years, ever since I've known her, ever since we've been together. She's had this um, leather-bound Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book, which I've been wanting to read for the longest time. She had no idea that she had it. I didn't know she had it. And then we were packing up their stuff or going through unpacking all of our house and then went through a box that I'd never seen before. And uh, yeah, so I have this version of it. And then I have the this box set version of it, which I got um, just this past year. So, which this is probably nice. I'll probably, I'll probably most likely read these because it'll be easier just to break up these individual um, books than to hold that leather bound, but it's still pretty nice. And this is probably the only book that I actually own double of too. So I got more Star Wars thrown on again. Like this is the hardback, so. Uh, I won't, you know, they won't really match with there, and it'll, it's just a waste of space. Recursion, another Michael Crichton, again, it wouldn't go with those. Uh, this is a fantasy trilogy, or sci-fi trilogy, that I don't even know that much about, but I've owned forever, so I really need to just, like, knock it out and read it. 
Uh, I got the Luminae trilogy. I know some of these aren't even in order. I, I haven't really gone through them completely yet, but I'll work on that later. <clears throat> Book one of Book of the New Sun. So this is like my big time challenge read for this year. I'm going to see if I can even get into it because I've heard it's very complicated and hard and man, that's tiny font too. So this is going to be like a maybe back end of the year when I get settled because my reading has gone way down since having uh, the baby. So, you know, I'll, uh, when I have some more brain power and time, I'll get into this one. Cage of Souls, Agent Tchaikovsky. I haven't heard too much people of reading this, but it just looks like an awesome book. Another Asimov, I, I own two, actually, uh, apparently I own two versions of iRobot, um, but I think I'd prefer these mass market paperbacks because I can get these a lot better and easier. So maybe I'll give this one away or something. My one and only Haruki Murakami book, A Wild Sheep Chase. I think I want to, I mean, obviously this is the one I'm going to start with. I did some very like casual Googling when I was at a bookstore in Singapore and they had all these with these covers and I would like them to match if I ever do get, get more than one. But I wanna actually read one first to see if uh, this style actually fits me because I definitely heard it's gonna be a bit of hit or miss. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut, same thing. I haven't read too many of them, but sometimes I could hear, most people like them, I think. Obviously I'm gonna start with Slaughterhouse-Five, but there's also some people that it might not fit and since they're a bit older um you know 50s 60s or something like that i don't always jive well with older type style reading older type style books classics anything like that but i'm gonna give these a try because they might be kooky enough for me than the the actual stiffer literary type books but i'm still gonna you know i have three of these and it was at a uh secondhand store or whatever you want to call it so i got them pretty cheap remix i have no idea who talked about this or how i found out about it i just remember i really liked it uh, the sound of it and um yeah and it's also kind of funny because if you look real real close it says it's almost my name there's an a in here that's not in my name but for some reason i don't know who this person is but i just thought that was also kind of kind of funny too then down here we have my stephen king shelf finally getting to book four of the dark tower uh century of storms finders keepers and so the bill hodges Trilogy. I really need to need to read Mr. Mercedes and Finders Keepers. Though I'd rather I'd rather have these covers of this series than this this older one. I just don't. I, I really like this the aesthetic of this one a whole lot better. The Beast that I'm supposed to read this year as well. The Stand. I'm actually supposed to read this before I even read Wizard and Glass. I'm not sure if I'm going to, but you know Stephen King is just like this is just such a huge book. But I know that certain his writing style and the fact that how highly praised this is. Um, it's probably gonna go okay for me. Um, it's just gonna be so long and like I, again I said I've been busy with baby stuff and job and things so like finding time to read it It would probably take me like six months just to read this because of how much time I'm even giving to reading right now But we'll see how it goes. Uh, the stand is definitely high priority. It's been high priority for a while It's just like committing to this beast is is a lot That's some other Mars mass market paperbacks of Stephen King's and then insomnia. I started reading this last year this is how far I got. I somewhat DNF'd it. I left it this, that, that in there because I probably plan on get, picking it up again. It was just going so slow and dragging and I just felt like nothing was going on. Now, weird stuff did start to go on. I'm almost about halfway, um, but it still just wasn't keeping me into it. So I also feel like this is the kind of book where I can just jump back in because again, there wasn't a whole lot going on. I don't really need to be fresh with characters and the environment and stuff. It's a guy who can't sleep, has seen weird, th weird things and there's weird stuff going on in the neighborhood. That's about it. So that's kind of where I'm at with this, but maybe I'll pick it up sometime. It's just, I've just kind of put it on hold for DNF for now. Then I have my starting, my Penguin Classics. I have four classics. I have Count of Monte Cristo, which I have a whole video on that I did a, a rant and talk about, reflection about. Uh, the Haunting of Hill House, I'll probably read in October. Frankenstein, again, October. And then Canary Row. I just moved to Monterey, that's where we live now, and Cannery Row is based off of and from here. And um, John Steinbeck is like basically famous, made Monterey famous. And you go down downtown Man Monterey and, and Cannery Row, you see Steinbeck everywhere. And then just one last like Japanese murder case tattoos of a Japanese murder book. Murder book. And then down here, as you can kind of see, are my non-fictions, basically ones on diet and nutrition. Um, my all-time favorite book on nutrition, I, I highly recommend, but I wouldn't... Uh, if you're new to nutrition, it might be a little bit too dense for you. And then, of course, the man and the company that I work with. So those are my bookshelf. This is my office bookshelf. You will obviously be seeing this in more videos of mine in the, my, my, back, my background. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do a close-up run-by. I might do it on my phone real quick once I get it all organized. Alrighty, so quick rundown of the shelf. Almost kind of done. Done enough for now. 
So I got my Crichton in order, size order. Yep, so I had to, had to get all that done. Uh, that's basically all I did. <clears throat> Kept my, uh, all the mass market paperbacks up here. This is the mass market paperback shelf. And then I have Deadpool. It's actually nice because he's wedged in there. He likes to fall over a lot because his feet aren't really stable. <clears throat> kind of fantasy, I got Buck Showalter, Orioles fan. So I've got my fantasy here. Um, these aren't in order, but you know, that's just whatever. Had to keep my, my Stephen King there. Um, more fantasy. This, these are, this is kind of like a sci-fi fantasy superhero thing, I think. Um, Master and Marguerite, I still don't know too much about it, but I want to read it. And then Adrian Tchaikovsky and We Are the Dead. I want to get the sequel of that because this is supposed to be a really good grimdark. And I got Hodor holding the door. All right. Now coming down to sci-fi, starting at the small order. Cold storage, I think this is kind of like a zombie-ish apocalypse. I've been in that mood. I brought up these before. My other one, Great Train Robbery, again, this, this... Uh, it's not a, it wouldn't really look right up there with the rest of the Crichton, so that's fine. Uh, Asimov, Fahrenheit 451. I want to give this one a try. I didn't have a good luck with Ray Bradbury with, in the past with his um, uh, Halloween Carnival one. I can't even think of what it's called now. My Hitchhiker's Guide, I uh, have it on that end. Uh, these, Illuminae. So I'm, gonna, I'm about to ruin somebody's day, and I don't really care. So Illuminae, Gemini, I think these are in order. Obsidio might even be the second one. I actually don't even look it up. But... If you notice, Obsidio is upside down, and I don't feel like changing it because it's blocked by the bar, so I'd have to actually like move things out of the way, slide it out to the side or something, and then flip it. So I'm just gonna ruin someone's day and just, I don't I really don't care that it's upside down. Um, this Mortal Coil, I really wanna get into. This is that <laughs> trilogy that I don't know much about, but I would like to read just because I have it. Thrawn, Recursion, and my nice of that. Stephen King shelf didn't really didn't change anything on there. Just got it all in the right size order. I don't have a ton of King, uh, and I'll probably unhaul some like the Long Walk because I won't read it again. I'm gonna know neither one my way. There's my Penguin Classics going there, and then my oh, there's my camera lens and mic, and these are my non-fictions that I own physical books of, not the audiobooks. But that is my office shelf. What I have going on and uh, subject to change. There's still more room. Uh, some kind of places, but that's, that's a good start. And in order if I want to move things around, but that is just a quick rehaul video of mine. I didn't do it as elaborate as some people do it, go, pulling through all the books and going through everything, but I just wanted to show you like our entire uh, book organization that these are just my office books. We have the other ones downstairs that my wife and I share, the all the fancy and um, you know sci-fi thr or, or uh, thrillers and mysteries. So that's how we organize our books. And then this is still probably only half of our library because we do a lot of Kindle reading. So I have tons and tons of books on Kindle and even audiobooks. So, um, and we don't do doubles. So, I mean, that, that's just a whole, whole other thing. But let me know what you think of my bookshelf, our organization, my bookshelves, how we're doing things. And uh, if you have any recommendations, put them down below in the comments and we can talk more there.